I want to do a quick rant on routers and security and why I choose open source software specifically for my routing. And this is just insanity to me. I don't even know how this passes code review by some of these people or how anyone thought this was a good idea. We'll start with the first one and I'll leave links to all this because I want you to read as well and kind of get a better perspective of this. Maybe I'm wrong and tell me I'm crazy if I'm crazy, but we're gonna start with 5,000 routers with no telnet password, nothing to see here, move along, like the title, and uh, type enter to hack. This, I, this is worthy of calling it a hack. Uh, this is a company that decided to ship devices um, and have Telnet open with the thoughts that maybe uh, the customers would go ahead and set this. And you don't want to bother with putting a password on it because the customer, when they get it, will take the time to set it. The tyranny of the default, as I've heard it called, and I like that phrase because people never change things out of default because if it works out of the box like default, away people go and they will not change it. Uh, so and this is obviously only 5,000 only is not that big of a deal, uh, but I'll leave a link to this. And this is where we're going to start. We're gonna move on to Draytech. Now, I've had a few people ask me, hey, what do you think of Draytech? Apparently, they're a popular uh, security model uh, or security routers. Uh, I'm not familiar with them. I have no uh, feelings about them one way or another. And, well, I didn't until uh, this and got me reading about them. Now, notification of urgent security ups, Draytech routers, I'm glad that they are addressing it. Hats off to them. They are owning up to it and listing all the things, uh, models are gonna be patched and providing firmware for this. So thank you for that. Uh, but this started with, it looks like Kevin Beaumont, and I'll leave a link to the tweet storm that set all this off. Reports are coming in that Tech routers have been mass hacked and DNS servers changed to them. So the first thing uh, Kevin reports here is the default admin passwords are really weak this is a lot of them and someone's probably going but other companies do this too yeah but they don't do it on the wan side this is a problem because if you plug something in and it just works great but if you have the wan side wide open uh you're asking for trouble because someone will plug in it'll work and then they're on the wan side uh this is not really that acceptable but i mean i understand the default password part but to have it open on the wan side out of the box that's insane Insane. The, the running theme so far is remote admin WAN enabled on by default. That is just wrong. Off by default would be better. Uh, Draytech, then he links to the con confirmation and the page I showed you where they said yes, there's some updates for it. And you can read, and this will probably be longer by the, you know, depending on when you look for this. But yeah, there's just a lot of. Uh, problems apparently with this and this is once again these are companies that provide you know black boxes that are magical with no visibility into the software that runs them they're not open source they do use some open source components and they release under gpl the components they use but the entirety of the software is not auditable so you can't know what else might be wrong inside of here or causing the issues this is still uh, a lot of people are complaining about this there's other if you just do the hashtag draytech right now on twitter uh there's a lot of people who complain about this but it's not a lot of details as to exactly how this hack is occurring and causing the dns to get changed and someone goes why don't you go with those expensive brand name firewalls tom the company we all know and trust which I don't know why you trust them, um, because the word again is is, is the key here. Hard coded passwords found in Cisco Enterprise Software again. <laughs> I don't know how this passes code review. Cisco is not an inexpensive product. Generally speaking, their hardware is really solid. I'm not knocking them as a performance product. They do a decent job, but but you can't hard code passwords. There, there is nothing you can compel me to think that hard coding some of this stuff in there is ever a good idea. And this is a list of vulnerabilities. Some people said, well, you shouldn't go hard on Cisco. I've seen this in one of the red comments because they self-disclosed it. I'm like, uh, what? What? That's, no, no, this company, yeah, this is, uh, this is stuff that makes me mad. Um, so the company discovered these flaws following as part of a massive series of internal audits started back in December 2015. At the time, the security researchers found a backdoor account in Juniper. Yes, Juniper did it too. That could decrypt B VPN traffic, and Cisco decided to hunt and root out similar backdoors before attacks are found. Yes, Juniper, another big, expensive router company. Now, my rant and kind of what I want to talk about in general with this 
is this is one of the reasons you're seeing a, a even bigger push to open source firewalls. These companies are realizing at the corporate level that they've given their money to these people and their trust has been betrayed. You know, when Juniper had a hard-coded password, some of these things are sometimes found for convenience reasons. The developer thought, well, I'll just put this in here because then I can have an easy way to admin it when we got to do support. Yeah, no one will ever figure out the password. No one will ever poke away at these firewalls that are on the internet where people poke at them and find this crazy password that I put in of not that hard to guess. And this is something you don't see in popular open source projects. I say popular because I'm sure you could find some firewall that was poorly written that is open source. So when you're choosing a firewall, you want to look at the history of that firewall. You want to look at something. Now, I, my choice is PFSense, but they're not the only open source game out there. I know there's other ones out there. and. That's a key to me before I like to deploy some of these is, are they open source? Have they gone through some type of code review or audit? And I will tell you, when you're releasing your source code, you're probably not gonna hard code a password because you're just thinking, hey, I gotta publish this on GitHub. I'm not going to uh, put the password in there because that won't be hard to find. <laughs> and that is at least the thought process I hope goes on with these closed source firewalls are giving you these black boxes that are magically going to protect your network, just trust us. Okay, we blindly trusted you and you have betrayed our trust with a series of oopses. And this is one of those things. I'm glad they're sorting these out, but that's still, they, once again, the black box just got updated with more black box data. I still can't see the software that went into it. I can't see the code that went into it. And Firewalls are very complicated device here in 2018 and getting more complicated. Security is really hard because with security, you have to be right all the time versus the bad guys. They only gotta be right once. They only gotta get that password once and they're in. They're looking for an edge all the time to get in. So someone who wants to mess with your firewall, mess with your security, that's what they're looking for. This is why I'm hesitant to you know, just jump on and try another firewall. There's a couple of them out there that I, at least from other security people I know and other IT companies I've worked with um, that have done some testing and are really happy with them. You know, Unify has a pretty good track record of keeping things up to date. And, you know, it's not like they're never gonna find a flaw. So, like I said, security starters are gonna find a flaw, but owning up to that flaw, and I say that for Draytech, they owned up to the flaw. I just understand the enabled by default part. I never use their devices to confirm that other than uh, seeing that in Twitter, but that sounds odd. Um, but, you know, there's gonna be flaws, there's gonna be patches. That is an accepted part of it. And properly disclosing, having CVEs and going through disclosure processes, those are great. Uh, but when you're, you are the security flaw, that's a big problem. So PFSense, been happy with them. They've worked really well. I've heard good things about Untangle. I, I've had a lot of people ask me if I wanna review it. It's on my to-do list. It's not, I'm kind of busy right now. Uh, maybe I'll get to it eventually. But I've kind of been thinking too, and I'm gonna try and, you know, maybe I can get some friends together and we can get some funding for this. But an idea I'm having is to try to do some testing against these firewalls that are really popular in the market. I mean, there's already these other security testing, but I'm looking for something more on the consumer side. So I wanna test more of them, but unfortunately it takes time and takes security people uh, to do it. So just some other thoughts on some of that, but open source definitely still, in my opinion, the best way to go because you can see the audio, you can see the, the magic that makes the black box work. That's the important part and why I still prefer an open source firewall. Is everything gonna be perfect? No, but at least I can see the code. And when you can see the code, the, the writers of that code are a lot less likely to do things like you know embed passwords and things like that. So that's my little rant about some security and open source and why I don't review every firewall or I wish I had time to, uh, but also why you're careful, gotta be careful and think about what you deploy. You know, and I can't say uh, don't always go with the cheapest is one rule, but the most expensive here, which is gonna be like your Cisco, they, they clearly have some issues too. So uh, once again, kind of an endorsement, like I said, one of the reasons I choose PFSense as uh, uh, the platform that runs my network. All right, thanks.